Well, let's talk about uh, the torch the next week uh, as we're marching through uh, 03 here. The widespread speculation is that Jeff Jarrett now has the final say on all booking matters and accepts input from his father and Vince Russo. It's assumed by most in TNA that Russo is actually formatting the scripts. Russo does not attend production meetings, perhaps in part because Jerry Jarrett does. More than one TNA source felt Russo's recent promo line about Jerry living vicariously through Jeff was a shoot. Unless Jerry and Russo are working everyone around them, there's still heat between the two of them. Is that right? That Russo wouldn't come to the production meetings because your dad was in them? It wasn't because of that. Uh, that picture, that I picture. Think, I brought like a memory. I think that was in the original TNA offices up on, um, yeah, that's uh, the original offices in, um, it was up on Gallatin Road. Anyway, uh, the original TNA office. Anyhow, uh, no, it wasn't because he, um, because my father was there. And I think you noted that, how'd you, how'd you say, Conrad, now I make all final decisions? Yep. Here's, here's, here's and, and look, and look, Wade, Wade. And they've made their money off of is to kind of create who's the buck stop. But from the beginning, before show one, I was the majority. And so this, the decisions rested on my shoulders. And when the Carters came in, the deal that was put in place was they do everything but the creative. Um, and you know, down to the talent budgets, they do everything. But as far as creating and creating and producing the show, the buck stopped with me always. So that was never really, but they were, and we've gone over this multiple times on this podcast on, you know, oh, this is a Jerry Jared influence. Or this is a Dutch Mantel or Vince Russo. But ultimately the decision kind of rests on my shoulders. But the at, during this time, and I'm not exactly sure, but there was a period of time. Vince lived in Atlanta, and on Mondays, I would drive from my house to just south of Murfreesboro, which is about a little over an hour, and he'd drive up, Conrad, from Atlanta, which is two and a half, and we would meet at a Cracker Barrel and go in the, the back and eat, or I would eat, but he wouldn't eat, have coffee or whatever, and we would just kind of throw ideas around, not just the following Wednesday show, two days from now, or when we met, but a couple of weeks and months, and we kind of had that rhythm of – thing and then on my drive back i'd call bob Ryder because i would put him on speaker and had my handwritten notes and kind of things things and i'm like hey let's generally format this what's coming up next wednesday and of course if dutch was there or obviously my dad during the time whoever else influenced it but ultimately it rested on the shoulders well i um I also want to ask about this line about more than one TNA source felt Russo's recent promo line about Jerry living vicariously through Jeff was a shoot. Did you ever feel that? Did anybody ever say that to you? Jerry living through vicariously through me? Yes. No. I mean, I, I not saying it wasn't said, but I don't believe that for a second. At that point, I say this, look, we all kind of been well documented here. Why do I not believe that? Because at the end of the day, two alpha males ended up not getting along and getting estranged because he wanted to do it his way. Yes. <laughs> that I mean, that's the reality. I wanted to do it my way. He wanted to do it his way. Ultimately, we butted heads and parted ways, unfortunately, but fortunately, you know, we reconciled. But the reality was, no, he did not live vicariously through me because he wanted he to do it through 